Hey, what's up, Zach here. And today I've got the all new On Cloud Monster. And if you're looking at these thinking these are a pretty different looking shoe, well, wait till you see what's inside of it. Now, in my experience treating athletes, I found that on shoes have been much more performance focused versus more plush ride or more super shoe focused. And that's why I was so excited to see the Cloud Monster come out because I really thought that this shoe could maybe compete with some more super shoes that some other companies have come out with that are a little bit more of a plush ride, a little bit more of a protection on your foot. Because if on really can find a way to combine the ridiculous performance of the Cloud Tech and the Speedboard with some more plush and comfortable elements, they really might have something here. What I've always admired about On Running is how they're able to keep their uppers really light and breathable, yet really strong and supportive. I mean, all it is is two layers of mesh. One layer is honeycomb, then you kind of have more of a digital pattern on the top, kind of allows airflow through. However, with no real foxing elements or stabilizing elements on the medial or lateral side of the uppers, they are pretty stable and you do feel like the shoe is moving with your foot. There's really not a lot of sliding around in there for the right foot types, which we'll get to in a little bit. However, you know, with some other Maximus running shoes, they really kind of hug your foot in the uppers with a lot of material, which kind of bogs your foot down and can make you sweaty. Whereas with these, you really never feel like your foot is getting drenched in there or you're getting too much heat buildup. And speaking of the upper construction, if you look at the upper durability test, the Dremel 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper, I mean, barely a scratch on this upper. It didn't even get through the first layer of mesh. So, I mean, these are more road running shoes. However, it, these really aren't gonna have a problem holding up to your foot on the inside of them or any debris that you might come into contact with when you're running in them. Now the one bit of caution in the uppers, the lace eyelets are outriggers, which I'm not the biggest fan of, and the laces are a little bit slippery and they do have a little bit of rebound and memory. So if I were going to buy these for more training daily use, I would invest in a pair of bubble laces or just something a little more tacky with the laces. That way I get a little bit more of a secure lockdown. If you want to check out a few of them, I will leave them linked in the description, ones I'm kind of talking about for this. All right, but getting into the midsole teardown. Now on is best known for a few things, but one of them being their speed board. Now that speed board runs from the heel all the way to the tips of the toes. Now the speed board is basically a liquid injected thermoplastic, which is basically just a plastic substitute. However, it's got more elastic particles in it, more elastomers. So when it's loaded, it responds a lot better than more just a standard plastic or thermopolyurethane. And another reason why the shoe gives you so much more energy return is not so much what the speed board is made of. It's just that it runs the whole length of the shoe. So the entire shoe gets loaded with potential energy and is able to turn into kinetic energy versus some shoes where the shank is just right in the middle of the shoe. And if you look at the jump height test, now remember when I do these jump tests, I always am serving a tennis ball so I can more isolate the lower limb. Even with the really steep rocker on the forefoot of the shoe, that angle of ascent, I'm still able to get 37 centimeters on that test versus some other shoes that are almost twice the weight of these. Now moving from the speed board into the actual foam of the shoe, you'll see on other signature, their Cloud Tech pods. Now the Cloud Tech pods are there for a few reasons. Reasons. Number one, you kind of need hollowed out foam underneath of this PebEx plate because when your foot is standing on plastic, something really hard, it's going to be really unforgiving. So you need something underneath of it to compress or else the foam will just be hard as a rock. The second thing is, is because these pods are all the way through the shoe, it also allows for much more forgiving gait. So even if your running form isn't so fluid, the shoe will also compress around it. And so your gait can kind of stay a little bit more efficient in these shoes versus some others. That's one of the big reasons that these shoes are really good for people that run up and down hills a lot because with the PebEx combined with the Cloud Tech pods, they're just really easy to propulse up a hill even if you don't have the most efficient stride. The problem with earlier models of on shoes though was because those Cloud Tech pods were pretty big, they had to be made with a foam that was pretty stiff and more resilient so that it wouldn't just crush through the first few times that you ran in them. And that made the shoes pretty unforgiving. So if you were somebody with heel or ball of foot pain, those shoes could actually inflame those symptoms a little more. Now, the Cloud Monster, however, because the Cloud Tech pods are a little more offset and there's just a higher stack of foam, plus the foam is that Helion, which is kind of a mixture of EVA and more Olefin copolymers, which is really similar to Under Armour Flow Foam, which is made from diaper elastic. These shoes give a much more cushioned and much more forgiving ride versus previous models in the on running line. So, you know, what I really like about the Cloud Monster is they give a lot more of an efficient stride, a lot more of a forgiving stride than some 
more maximalist running shoes do. However, they're also a little bit lighter than some more maximalist shoes. So you kind of are hitting a sweet spot with these in between a more performance lightweight shoe and a more maximalist protective shoe. What I found most interesting about the midsole setup of the Cloud Monster is when I was checking my heart rate in them versus my regular setup shoes on the treadmill, which is my New Balance 840s, I found a modest but consistent heart rate decrease across my mile times at the 30 minute mark. I found that at my standard mile pace at 30 minutes, I was consistently three beats per minute lower in the Cloud Monster versus my New Balance 840s, which are the shoes that I've kind of found to be the most kind of comfortable for me to run in, kind of fit my gait the best. And if you take that over a long period of time, that does equate to a pretty decent boost in performance. Now getting into the outsole tread, this is that real minimalist tread design like we're used to seeing with On. And this does have a few advantages and disadvantages. It, number one, because it is such a flat profile and the rubber thickness is so small, they do allow a little bit more ground contact and ground feel. And you really need that because there is a big channel of air separating the ball of your foot from the ground. So this does allow you just to feel the ground a little bit more, keep you a little bit more stable. The bad part is, is because it is so flat, it's more of a racing skid type pattern. If you are straight road running, they're gonna grip just fine. They do actually have a pretty decent tack to them. However, anything that's just a little bit more slick, because these tread channels are so close together, there's nothing separating the tread to allow it to grab into there. Even just some slick composite bridges I was going over, I did find myself slipping just a little bit on. So as long as you stay on blacktop or the side walk, I mean, I think they're fine. However, just don't expect to go into the woods and try to grab traction on them. And on the outsole durability test, the Dremel 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper, it's a little bit over a millimeter of damage. Now the rubber thickness is only three millimeters. So I would just say if you produce a lot of friction when you run, these might start wearing down on you a little bit. However, if you do have a pretty efficient gait, you really shouldn't have a problem as long as you are, like I said, straight road or sidewalk running. Now the fit of the Cloud Monsters is actually pretty interesting. They're very forgiving, pretty much no break in time. If you are a narrow or medium foot and you want a one-to-one -one fit, you can actually go down a half size in these. These were a perfect shoe for my 2E width foot. So it, these will fit a little bit boxier in the forefoot if you are a little bit wider. And that does bring me to another thing. If you are somebody with ball of foot pain, these are a pretty ideal running shoe because they do offload the forefoot pretty well, which I'll get to why in a second. However, if you're somebody with heel pain, I probably would still throw in an orthotic in these. Even though they are a lot more forgiving than other on shoes, it is still plastic right underneath your foot. So I just would throw an insert in these and you should be fine. And in terms of gait styles that are best for the Cloud Monster, I'd say if you are a midfoot striker or a true heel striker, these are gonna do fantastic for you. They are incredibly fluid at strike as well as propulsion. If you are a more forefoot striker, you might wanna watch out a little bit because these do have such an aggressive rocker, that angle of ascent is so steep. You might find yourself kind of getting your balance a little bit too forward. You might be pushing forward in the shoe too much. It might be jamming your toes in the toe box. However, midfoot and back, they are phenomenal. But also I'd love to hear your thoughts on the Cloud Monster and just on shoes in general. Are you willing to try them? Have you tried them before? And kind of what are your thoughts? Just let me know in the comments down below. And if you want to see one of On's other really interesting creations, the On Roger Pro designed by Roger Federer himself, make sure you click in this video up above and subscribe down below. Respect your rubber and foam and plastic substitutes. I'll see you in the next video.